historically speaking, Justin, evangelicals over the last 100, 150 years have been primarily that aren't confessional are dispensational and dispensationalists tend to not be covenantalist. And so our dispensationalist brothers are Protestants and evangelical. So Protestant means yep. to protest Rome. You're, uh, you're well to bear witness, right? Against it saying protest we don't agree with their witness, testimony. Yeah. And then evangelical is really a phrase. This kind of just means that we agree on the core essentials of the gospel. It's kind of where that came from. People of the evangel, the good news. People of the evangel. And so to call them Calvinjelical, meaning that they would be a slight little bit more clarity, meaning that they're Calvinistic evangelicals. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of evangelicals today, a lot of people who promote um, Calvinism that are prominent tend to be very conservative dispensationalists. I'll give you an example of this would be someone like John MacArthur or even John Piper uh, or even Matt Chandler, guys like this. I would and all those guys Mark might Driscoll. not be dispensationalists, but they're yeah, well, they're they, evangelical. They, they would be more leaning dispensational because they would not hold to covenant theology. They would, yeah, they would hold some kind of either dispensation or some kind of like new covenant view or something like that. Exactly. Uh, specifically, though, John Piper, I mean, John MacArthur is for sure holds to a dispensational view. And the reason sure. why I, I mentioned this, this is important because historically dispensationalism is. Um, a non-confessional, listen, I love my dispensational brothers. I once was one. I was trained in a dispensational school. So um, I say this with as much compassion mm -hmm. and, and not to be and derogatory appreciation. at all. Appreciation. Right. Yeah. I mean, they have been great defenders of the Orthodox faith for a long time where they're trying to protect things like the sufficiency of scripture, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they tend to be non-confessional mm -hmm. and pietistic in nature because Historically, dispensationalists weren't Calvinist. They were more Arminian, free will, for like a free will Baptist kind of an idea. Mm -hmm. And it's been a more modern shift where our brothers are looking at the text, taking it more serious. And you will see that uh, I, I think the biggest name, in my opinion, would be John MacArthur. What ends up happening is that uh, because he's conservative and Calvinistic, people then will will then put him into the historic reformed camp. And I'm not here trying to be picky on who's in the boat, who's not in the boat. That's we're, that, it's not the point. It's just that there are category confusions and there's why we'll sound, Justin and I are going to sound different than someone like a Piper or a MacArthur or even a Matt Chandler because the, the positions that we're coming from are actually theologically different because mm -hmm. we're understanding scripture. We agree with them on Calvinism. Right. But when it comes to confessional theology, which is the rest of like covenant theology and confessionalism and, and law order means of grace, and law gospel yeah. distinction, we're going to look at the text differently. Yeah. Like all of the rest of scripture, we're going to actually look at it different. When we come to the passages on like Calvinism, like you were dead in your trespasses and sins, if I preach that and MacArthur preaches that, it's going to sound the same because we agree with them on those passages. But when it comes to the rest of Scripture, yeah, we're, we're going to look at it differently because of the historic Reformed approach where mm -hmm. their approach is either going to be like um, it, it's going to be more dispensational or guys like Piper who would probably would not call himself a dispensationalist. No, but he's kind of a mono covenantalist. Yeah. He would like, be more of yeah. a biblicist. Yeah. I think the guys who are Calvinists and are dispensationalists would disagree with covenant theology self-consciously. Like they would say it's not helpful in terms of a way yeah. to understand the scriptures uh, from Genesis to revelation, like hermeneutically in terms of how we interpret it's not good. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of guys that are more broadly evangelical Calvinists are going to be in a camp where they're kind of new covenant guys or progressive covenantalists. And they might not even have all the categories of historical covenant theology. They might not be vehemently opposed to it. They might kind of think they agree with it, but they're certainly not going to see it as a really important matter like you and I would in terms of how we understand scripture. So when we talk about Jesus from all of the Bible, we're talking about covenant theology. You know, we're talking about understanding that this is one plan of God to redeem and save, accomplished through Christ. And covenant theology is going to help us understand how it all hangs together.